everyone, it's Lauren Bradley here from The Officials. I'm bringing you another video in the series that I'm doing with the lovely folks over at Anderson Hoare. Last week we talked about the truth about temping and this week we're going to talk a little bit about how I became a private personal assistant and how you can too. So I'm going to tell you right off the bat, there are two ways, in my opinion, that you can be a uh, break into being a personal assistant. One is you either know somebody. This is the big secret that you uh, just will not know unless you're in this industry or in this side of the industry is that everything in the high net worth or ultra high net worth individual world is about recommendations and who you know. It is all about who you know. And so if they need something from a handyman to a, a driver in central pay, um, to uh, a housekeeper, to a personal assistant, anything, anything where they're letting somebody into their private lives, into their homes, they will first go to friends and family and ask for recommendations. The other way is if, and if you don't have a connection, if you haven't already worked in this industry or you don't know, aren't often mingling with high net worth individuals or their assistants who off, also off, often get asked, if anybody knows someone for their friend, um, then how can you break into the industry? The other way is to go with an agency that specializes in private personal assistance or household staff. Um, I highly recommend signing up for as many as you can, getting to know them, sparkling and shining when you get there. So I actually uh, have been an assistant for over 10 years and I had been applying for private household assistant jobs in the first five years that I was an assistant. I just wasn't getting anywhere and I kind of gave up that dream. Some really amazing jobs came up and I just was never even called. Now this was be before I knew how to optimize my LinkedIn, before I knew how to optimize my CV or resume wherever you live and whatever you call it. And um, I didn't understand why, even though I had an assist been an assistant, why I wasn't getting calls. And the reason why is because one, I didn't know anybody. I had no previous experience on my, uh, on my record and I had not come with any type of recommendation. So what happened, how I got into the industry is that by the time I was contacted, I had learned how to optimize my CV. I had learned how to optimize my LinkedIn profile. And that's something I'll talk to you about in another video. Um, if you're interested. So if you're interested, make sure that you comment below and, and I'll make sure to get that, uh, in this series for you. Um, but I had made sure that I was more easily searchable so that someone could find me and a, um, a recruiter had matched me up with the a really great principal. She was wonderful. And the only reason why she didn't go with someone she knew from family and friends was because she, they, at the time she had asked, she had always gotten her assistance that way. There was no one really, uh, no really recommendations that they could give her. So she went to um, her accounting team, actually, who worked with a great recruiter that specialized in private assistants and uh, household staff, and um, they found me. And so that is how I broke into the industry. It just happened to be sort of the right place at the right time, but it really was still through a recommendation because they trusted, she trusted the assistants and the assist, or I'm sorry, the accountants and the accountants really trusted this agency and, um, and they found me now. And it just happened to, to be a fluke. I wasn't even looking for work. I had a three month old baby and it just is too good to pass up and it's been wonderful. And now I work for four different clients at once I while building the officials and the community there uh, because I feel it's really important to be uh, a working PA so that I can uh, learn myself and bring you great tips and tricks but um, but I only got those roles because I had the first role and the first role recommended me the first principal I had recommended me to all these people and uh, and somehow I just kept filling in and filling in and now I'm, I work for all of them so my recommendations to you is one, network, 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 network. You don't, if you don't know any private personal assistants, you do now because you know me. Uh, I'm happy to talk to anyone um, and uh, get to know you a little bit better and give you some tricks. If you have specific questions, put them below. I'll be happy to make another video about them or answer them um, below this video. And also go to networking events, go to events that people like Anderson Hoare put on and get to know as many as possible because I get asked 
a lot if I know an assistant, usually for part-time work, um, which is why it's always uh, a little bit different, but uh, and why it's always good to know an agency because they're going to find you more full-time stuff. But uh, the more assistants you know, the more likely you are to be asked if you're ever looking for anything and letting people know that you are looking is important. So one, go to networking events. Get to know as many people as possible. I'm not really sure how you can network in a high net worth individual um, sort of atmosphere, but if you can think of a way, whether you're really into the arts, um, that's a really great way. Um, but most likely, go and meet other private personal assistants. Contact them, hit them up, ask them how they got into the business and if they have any tips and tricks for you. And two, sign up with an agency that specializes in private PA work and uh, household staffing. I personally recommend that you um, sign up with as many as you can. The, again, the more people you touch, the more people that get to know who you are and that you're specific look, specifically looking for this type of work and the more you learn about this type of environment and what it's like to be an assistant, private personal assistant, the more likely you are to find work. So those are my two tips for you on how to become a private personal assistant. Now, I'll talk to you another time what it's actually like to be a private personal assistant. I can tell you, I love this work. Um, it's not, for, for me, I can go in in jeans and a t-shirt, which is such a big deal to me. Uh, I'm not a big fan of heels. Uh, I'm not a big fan of dresses. I'm just someone that's always ended up crawling around on the ground trying to plug in Ethernet cables and getting boxes. I'm very physical. I love um, hanging pictures. I love getting involved and getting my hands dirty. And so office wear just doesn't, doesn't work for me. Um, and I just love how you can see how impactful you are to an individual and to their family and how helpful you can be. And you get to see real time change and real time effects for the work that you're doing. And it's very rewarding. Uh, it is very different than being in an office. There are, your skills totally overlap. However, there are, it has its own unique challenges and benefits, and I'd love to tell you about them if you're interested. So let me know below if you have any comments, questions, what your experience is, how you got into being a private personal assistant, if you want to be a private personal assistant, um, and you have some questions, or if you have questions about something, I uh, just want to suggest something you'd like to hear about in the future, in a future video. I'd love to hear it, and uh, I hope everybody has a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.